my acquaintance with paper began many years ago. My father was a, a foreman in a paper mill, and so early on I was brought into contact with paper in anything but a quotidian way. It was huge machines and steam and chemicals and wood pulp and energy and noise, and it was terrifying, and then this amazing, beautiful, clean, white stuff came out the other end, and you know, it was like alchemy to me. It was magic. Uh, I also, because he worked at a paper mill, got to play with paper, where other people played with Lionel trains. I played with cardboard and cardstock and packaging. Um, so I got a real feel for it, like a sense memory for it early on. And I also, I had learned through my father that you can make anything, I mean nearly anything, out of a paper. Uh, it can, they're not always easy to do, but you can do it. And in my career now, I have people come to me saying, can you make me a forest? Can you make me a waterfall? I'd like you to make sadness out of paper. Can you do it? And while all of those have been challenging, <laughs> you can do it, or I can do it. And that's part of what I think is so wonderful. It's, it's the cheapest, most ordinary material, and I'm able to make really extraordinary things out of it by touching and cutting and pushing and gluing, and then voila, it's magic again. I love it. I'm a big proponent of thank you notes, or of reaching out and, and, and letting someone know that you appreciate them or you, you've heard them. And I always send them at the end of a project, but I frequently send thank you notes in the middle of a project, you know, whenever there's a hiccup. And let's face it, with clients, there are sometimes hiccups. Um, and I will send a thank you note and say, you know, thank you for helping me get on the right direction. Um, and then something like, between your passion and my passion, this project is certain to be fantastic. And um, what I found is being disagreeable without or being, or rather, disagreeing without being too disagreeable is a very big surprise to most people. And it yields great results. Um, it yields an opportunity usually to work with that person again. And it also brings me uh, a chance to sort of step outside of my head and look at what their needs are. It's not just me creating. It's me creating for someone. And while I, I want to think I know what's right, that's not always the case. So I try to keep one ear open. And um, a thank you note and a little surprise is a way of letting people know that communication is wide open. And I'm here, if they want to say something, I want to hear it. To make your goal of being a viable creative business, you have to have a network. I mean, offices are set up with secretaries and assistants and directors and assistant directors and bosses, and you have a network there that makes things run. A lot of creative companies are one, two, three people doing their best in some, you know, shabby room, and that's hard. And the way you augment that is you find smart, creative people and you, you call upon them to help you. I think that's hard for craft people and, and creative people. They, they feel they have to control it all. And if you control it all, I've seen businesses work, they control it all, but they cease to be creative because the one creative person in the business is doing all of the administrative stuff and then the creativity part dies. So you have to take care of what you're bringing to it, which is the creative aspect. And then you have to just staff everything else. You might have to staff it with your mother and your brother and your boyfriend, but you can't do it all and you shouldn't do it all. Do the part you do best.